Welcome ladies and gentlemen back to the channel and today we're going to be recreating yet another historical failure of war machinery. Now a while ago I built this historical failure which I will link down in the description if you missed that episode but uh, on this episode I got a ton of comments to build the Tsar tank. Now the Tsar tank was an attempt by the Russians to overcome the uneven and difficult terrain of the First World War. And um, you know, let, let's let's dive into it a little bit because it's it's got some amusing tidbits of history here. So this is what it looked like. It was basically kind of a giant reverse tricycle rather than having a big wheel on the front and two small wheels in the back. This has two giant wheels in the front and a small wheel in the back. And this is a really old, low quality photo, so it's hard to see a lot of the detail. But up here where this guy is standing in the middle, uh, there's a turret. There's also a turret down here. There's also a turret right here. And of course, symmetrically on the other side, there is another turret. So the intent was that these massive wheels are gonna be powered by very, very strong engines. And because of how big they are, they should be able to overcome any obstacle out in the battlefield, right? Well, wait till you hear what happened. See, the Russians were actually smart about it because unlike some of the other failures that we've recreated, they actually did a small scale model first for proof of concept to make sure it was actually going to work. And apparently it was successful because it received backing after the demonstration with the scale model. But you see, the problem with this scale model testing is that uh, the issues weren't with the mechanics of the vehicle itself. The issue was with its weight and the terrain, which a scale model does not model very well. So they proceeded to spend a lot of money building this thing, and it ended up being 50% over its intended weight, which you could say is a problem. But the testing was actually going well in 1915. The tank did really well moving across firm ground, even crushing trees and going over trees. But there is one thing that they had not anticipated. A soft patch. You see, when you build a small scale model that isn't really heavy and you're testing it on whatever ground or obstacles, I even read in other articles that they uh, they drove it over books <laughs> to show its ability to go over difficult and uneasy terrain. Uh, none of that really simulates heavy weight on a soft patch of ground very well. And of course, this ended up being the Achilles heel of the star tank. Because you see, looking at this model here, a lot of this weight is actually pushing down on the back wheel, which is tiny and not really good for maneuvering over terrain. This was just for steering. So once it reached the soft ground, this ended up getting bogged down in, in the terrain. And then these ended up getting bogged down trying to get this thing out of the terrain. And then the engine power was just not enough to be able to unstuck it from the soft patch. And it was so badly stuck, in fact, that all attempts to free the vehicle had failed. And it gets even better because just think the whole purpose of this vehicle, the whole appeal, the whole reason why this project was funded in the first place was because it was designed to go over the difficult terrain of the battlefield. And this thing got stuck in the terrain so badly that they left it there. They abandoned it there for six years because they couldn't get it unstuck from the terrain. It eventually had to be broken up where it stood and scrapped in 1923. Just imagine putting all of that effort and energy into building something this massive and then just having to give up and walk away from it. You don't even get to take it with you as a failure. <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Nikolay Lebedenko, head of War Ministries Experimental Laboratory. Oh, that sounds epic. I want to be the head of an experimental laboratory. This is exactly the type of thing I would expect to come out of a War Ministries experimental laboratory. But anyway, now that I've made fun of how badly of a failure this thing was, time to build my own. You see, on this channel, the concept of failure doesn't have to be a negative thing as long as it's also entertaining. And this totally passes that test. So I'm not making fun of it in a negative way. I'm actually, I'm showing my appreciation for it. <laughs> the amount of commitment that went into such an uncertain experiment is admirable, really. Okay, so I got some good news. Uh, I read that the big wheels were about six times the size as the rear wheels. 
So if I use this as the rear turning wheels, and these are five blocks in diameter, that means the bigger wheel should be 30 blocks in diameter. And it just so happens that I have saved on my lift a 31 diameter circle, which is almost perfect. In Scrap Mechanic, it's gonna have to be an odd diameter anyway, so it actually has a one block center point so we can put the bearing on it. So I'm totally gonna be using this. I think I'm just gonna stick with the four spokes instead of making a whole bunch of spokes because it's just gonna keep it lighter. And if we're gonna be turning these things with engines, we're gonna need these to be relatively light. All right, now we have our first sense of scale. This is gonna be the size of the wheel. So you could now start imagining the rest of this thing that is built off of this. Oh, this is, this is not gonna be an easy build, is it? Okay, I think I've got one wheel built with the, uh, toe? What? Why does that not, uh, roll? That should be free-floating. Are we getting a good old scrap mechanic collision issue right now? Oh, see, it goes all the way up there. Oh, now it goes down just fine. This is gonna, this is gonna cause an issue, isn't it? Yeah, having this have no space in between like that, I feel like that's gonna cause an issue. So rather than deal with that later, let's fix it now. All right, there we go. Now I've added one block of space on either side of the wheel. Should, so that should mean, yep, that we're not gonna have any issues with this thing spinning now. Okay, so now the distance between the wheels, I, I haven't found any measurement of what that distance was in relation to like the size of the wheel itself. It looks like it's a little bit less than a full wheel diameter. So I'm gonna use this as my reference point to space out the beam in between these uh, wheels. I'm thinking like that much, maybe? Here, let's find out. If I weld that right there, how does that look proportion-wise? Why does something look off? Oh, it's my lift isn't in the center, that's why. Let's just delete the lift. I feel like that, that looks comparable. I feel like that's good enough. I mean, I'm not uh, writing a history dissertation here, I'm just, I'm just building something in scrap mechanic. It's not like it has to be 100% to scale to work. Okay, so that only took me 40 minutes to make this section, and I feel like that was the easy part. Now we gotta build the whole weird, oddly shaped rest of it with the turrets and everything. Oh boy. All right, so it turns out there's actually a door in the back. So I am uh, building a door right here. All right, and I feel like these ramp pieces might right here actually make a pretty good uh, angle down to the back wheel. So I'm gonna use these. Okay, so I think I've got the whole back section down. Unfortunately, using these pieces makes me not able to paint the sides. You can only paint this top part. Oh, missed the paint spot here. But you know, we're not gonna worry about the paint. I don't think that's the main point here, or the main paint, if you, you guys, never mind. But I need to figure out if the steering mechanism that I built actually works. So let's just do a really quick test. I'm gonna hook this up right here. Hook this into the steering bearing. And, oh, would you look at that? It actually kind of works. So I should also be able to hook into the bottom one. I think I have to reverse that one though. Oh yeah, it's much stronger now. So yeah, we're gonna have pretty strong steering in the back. And I think proportion wise, as far as how far this goes down, it keeps it relatively level. So I think we're actually, let's let's do a quick test here before I build out the turrets and everything. And just slap an engine down real quick and hook it up to these. Let's see if these uh, actually roll. <laughs> okay, ready, go. Oh, look at that. Okay, we're gonna be able to get some speed out of this thing, maybe, depending on how much more weight I add to it. But, everything's seen, oh wait, can I turn? Yep. Oh my goodness, this is actually gonna work. I think this is actually gonna work. Oh no, 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 wait, 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 delete the engine. <laughs> it almost went, almost went off without me. All right, well, I was gonna try to have a fancy doorknob thing on the back of this, but um, I don't have enough room to open that with this here, so I'm gonna have to delete this. All right, and I had to give it this curved inner edge here because otherwise the corners were actually getting caught up and wouldn't let it close all the way. All right, so now we should actually be able to walk into this thing. Not a whole lot of room's gonna be in here though. There's gonna be a turret up here somehow. There's also somehow gonna be a turret down. I don't know how access is gonna happen with these things. And there's also gonna be a turret over here and a turret over here, somehow. I don't know what I'm doing yet. All right, this is this is not a lot of space to work with dimension wise. Like I have a seat in here. The seat fits 
exactly in here. Like there's no room outside of this one seat. And this is supposed to be a two, at least two turret. I've seen different uh, models. Some have two turrets up here and some have four turrets. But you can see there is a seat in there. Uh, I can go in first person here. So you see <laughs> behind me, there is a slit. In front of me, there is a slit. Apparently there are some versions that have slits on the left and right as well. And this is supposed to fit, you know, multiple people uh, controlling each of the guns, but that's not happening here, that's for sure. So this is actually just gonna be the main control center. This is where we're gonna drive the vehicle from. This is where we're gonna control uh, at least this turret from. Probably, the, I'm gonna probably gonna control the bottom turret from this too. I'm gonna hook them together. All right, check it out. Now I can turn the turret left and right without any issues. All right, I gotta put guns in this thing now. All right, this is gonna be easier said than done because in order to move these guns up and down, I need double bearings, which actually could work like this. All right, so I've gone ahead and put a logic system down here that is going to activate basically the machine gun uh, function for these spud guns. So now if I get in the seat here, there we go, and I press number five. All right, we got some machine gun action. So now I should be able to raise and lower them. It's all gonna be controlled by the same seat here. And I can also turn left and right. So this was actually a real life limitation of the uh, the original tank, was it limit the wheels actually limited the range of firing for the turret because they would shoot their own wheels if they tried to aim too far left or right because the wheels extended above where the turret's visibility was. And I think that's probably why they added so many more turrets like on the sides and on the bottom and on the back and the front of this. They pretty much had all of the range covered. And even in first person here, it's not too bad. I mean, there are some little bit, we little bit of weirdness going on, but don't worry about it. All right, so now there was also a turret on the bottom and I, it was a lot smaller. It didn't have as much room, it looks like. So I'm just going to have it also controlled by that seat up there. Basically everything in the center is gonna be controlled by that one seat and I might be able to fit independent controls for the side turrets, but we'll see what we can do. All right, bottom turret is now installed and I think the controls should be all set too. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll put it on a lift just to reset everything back to its zero position. Let's check it out. So now left and right, it should, they pretty much should go together like that. Aiming the turret up and down. I'm assuming that there was only one turret on the bottom one because the reverse turret would be completely blocked by the rear wheel. So I'm just, I'm putting one turret on there. If they put a back turret on, I don't know. I don't know what they would be thinking if they decided to put a back turret on there, but I'm assuming they didn't. All right, so this is actually turning out pretty well. Can I go forward? Oh no, I don't actually, I forgot. I don't have an engine anymore hooked up. I need to find a spot to put that engine. Finding places for all this stuff is not easy. I could stick an engine right under the rear wheel here. Perfect. Okay, this is looking good so far. All that's left now is the side turrets. Okay, so I've already built the entire system here and uh, because it's gonna have its own seat, I can actually use normal seat controls to control the turret because now with um, these level five seats allow us to control these bearings in a different way. You can do bearing lock on, which means now when I'm in the seat and I go left and right, I can just slowly turn this left and right and keep it where I'm aiming. And then because the engine's now hooked into the seat, now I can use W and S to aim the gun up and down as well. And then number one, of course, is hooked into uh, the thing. Okay, I don't know why all that dust kicks up. You know, muzzle flash is a thing. This is a really dusty muzzle flash, so we'll just have to deal with it. So as you can see, my intent is to have its own rotating platform within this segment that's gonna be sticking out. So now I actually kind of need to build around this, which is gonna make things kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, I think I've got one side all built out. So here, check out how it looks. So we enter through the back and then you can see we got our seat right here. Uh, enter at your own risk because getting out of this thing is a little bit of a nightmare. But we can go in in first person. You can kind of see what's going on here. I can't really close off the, the exposed areas on the sides without limiting the movement of this thing. But this is as much as it's gonna let us move because as you can see, the seat is, uh, it, it, the seat's pretty crammed in here. 
butt. Go ahead and press the button. Oh, the button's not hooked up right now. Okay, I gotta get out of the seat real quick. Right. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, just gotta. It'll take a second. Hold on. Err. Uh, almost. All right. No, maybe if I, I gotta turn this way. Hold on. Huh. All right. Just get. Let me out. There we go. Got out of the seat. I don't know if that was a problem they had back in the day or not, but uh, that's a problem we have. All right, I just gotta hook this up into the spud gun, and now. There we go. Now we can fire. All right, and we can aim the gun up and down from the outside. This is what it looks like. I think it actually looks pretty cool. Okay, so now I just gotta try to do the exact same thing on the other side without mismeasuring anything. Okay, I think the left side is now done. We've got full control over this one as well. First person. Looks just about the same. Just as uh, low visibility as everything else. All right, I think it's perfect. All right, now I just gotta, I just gotta get out of the seat. One sec, there we go. All right, so check it out. This is what it looks like on the lift, proportion-wise. I think it actually, I think it's looking pretty good compared to the picture. All right, so the strength of this thing was supposed to be able to go all the way across the battlefield and over uneven terrain and all that stuff. So let's put it to the test. Let's drive it. Around. Oh, look, we got perfect areas over here to drive this thing around. Let's see if we can drive this thing around. Um, the problem, oh, in order to get into the actual top, I actually got to do it from down here. There we go. All right, are we ready? <laughs> we got our little turning wheel in the back down there. So let's turn over. Let's go through this cornfield first. All right, we got the wheels going. Oh man, this is ridiculous. It's actually kind of working too. And with separate controls, I can actually control the turret and the guns as I'm driving. So one of the weaknesses of this thing was the back wheel. Oh, we're going right through this cornfield, no problem. This isn't even max engine power either. I could turn the engine up a little bit more. We're definitely not, probably not gonna fit down there. Can I fit between these trees? Uh oh, uh oh, I don't know about my side turrets. Oh, I think we're good. I think we're all good. Okay, we might have to raise, oh, I wanna go up there. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna raise, I'm gonna, let's just go max engine power. Let's see how much power we can really get out of this thing. Even though historically they were like, the, the power is a little bit too weak for it to get through soft terrain at least. Why do I keep trying to go inside? I can go up here. All right, this is max engine. Oh no, that I may regret. I may, that, that may have been a mistake. Okay, hold on. Oh my goodness, this is, <laughs> This is starting to be uh, the panjandrum thing, that that kind of <laughs> effect here, where one side gets more grip than the other side. Yeah, maybe max engine speed wasn't the greatest idea. I'll turn the engine down a little bit. We'll do one from the top instead of max power. See if that's any better. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, I did it. I thought I was gonna hit on the right side there. All right, look at this. Full speed ahead. <laughs> this, is, this is not supposed to go this fast. The thing was supposed to go like, I think if I remember correctly, 17 kilometers an hour or so. Oh boy, I wonder if that was ever an issue, tipping over? We have to really put this thing to the test. It has turrets on it. We gotta see if we can actually kill something with these turrets. Let's spawn in some bots and um, have a go at it. All right, so we got a whole bunch of hay bots up ahead of us. So I think I'm gonna have to do first person for this. Let's see how this goes. Okay, right, let's do follow camera as well. Oh, it is so hard to see. All right, maybe first person isn't gonna... Oh, they're coming after me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, hold on. Hold on, that's fine. That's fine, because we can actually... We can shoot from behind as well. All right, here we go. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This rear gun is actually really useful. Uh-oh. All right, well, you know what? We'll just back up. Just back up real quick. Please don't destroy my wheels. Oh, I can actually shoot. Oh, never mind. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. We just destroyed them all. I mean, we didn't even have to go to the side turrets either. All right, now let's put this thing against a farm bot. Of course we got to do, maybe I'm just going to do a couple of farm bots. Okay, I can back up while I shoot. Look at that. Oh, there are, oh, there are, this might actually, this might be a good thing for us. If, they, if I'm, I'm so high off the ground that they think they can't get me. And rather than trying to hit my creation, they're actually just trying to shoot me. 
And I don't think that stuff affects me in creative mode, so I, I don't think they're really gonna do any damage at all. Oh, there goes one. He's just gonna blow the other two up, aren't you? Oh, did he blow one? Yeah, he blew one up, and I'm just gonna get this other guy now. And he's second now. And he's second now. There he goes, he's down. All right, look at that. Well, I think this thing actually turned out surprisingly well. It's definitely a pretty big build for a single episode, but uh, let me know what you guys think. If you have any other suggestions of stuff you'd like to see me try to recreate in any of the games that I play, leave those comments down below. If you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some of my other recreations as well that you can see on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.